Hello chemistry folks, I'm getting another lab here. We have vinegar, acetic acid. Okay, so we've been talking about acids. And we have eggs. Eggs are eggs, but eggs are covered in a shell. And this shell is calcium carbonate, which is a base. So we're gonna take this acid, we're gonna take this base and we're gonna put them together to get, hopefully a neutralization reaction. We wanna see what happens to the eggs. So I'm gonna take each one of these eggs, place them into the cup without breaking them. And now I will add vinegar to each cup. This is not gonna be an instantaneous reaction, sorry. This is gonna take some time. Now I've just put them in there, but we're gonna go ahead and take a closer look to see what the eggs are doing right now, and then probably take a look at them again tomorrow and the next day. Now let's take a closer look at what's actually going on with this reaction. I've got the calcium carbonate, which is the eggshell, and the acetic acid, which is vinegar. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crisscross those ions that make those up to find out what those reactants actually look like and go through a double replacement reaction. When I do that, it ends up making carbonic acid and calcium acetate. I balance the equation, but I'm left with the problem. Neither of those two products are gases. So what I need to do is realize that that carbonic acid actually has to go through another reaction. It's gonna go through a decomposition reaction and turn into water and carbon dioxide. That's where our bubbles come from. Okay, it has now been about 24 hours. You can see the eggs are all floating right now. Uh, popping out the top of the vinegar. There's some foam on the top. The eggs are covered in bubbles. Let's go ahead and take one of them out and see what it looks like. Now at this point, the egg was actually quite slimy. And it was also bouncy as well. Most of the shell had come off and it was starting to deteriorate. I decided I was gonna put them back in there a little longer to see if I could get more of the shell to disappear. At this point, I've gone ahead and left the eggs and the vinegar a little longer than I thought. It's been about 60 hours. We're gonna take them off, rinse them off, and see what they look like. And at this stage, no, the eggs are not cooked, okay? They're still still raw, okay? They do have a little bit of a bounce to them. This one, you can see it a little easier. You can see the yolk inside of there. You squish it too much, yes, it will break and it'll splatter. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each one of these three eggs and place them into a different type of solution, and we're gonna see what happens to them over the course of time. But first, we need to go ahead and figure out what are their masses right now. Egg A has a mass of 87.63 grams. Egg B has a mass of 93.76 grams. And egg C has a mass of 108.99 grams. Now egg A, I'm going to put in a solution of air. I'm gonna see if I just put that in air what happens to that over the course of the time. For egg B, I'm going to put that with a solution of water. And for egg C, I'm gonna see what happens with a solution of syrup. So I'd like you to make predictions. What will happen to egg A? What will happen to its mass? What will happen to egg B? What will happen to egg C? Now at this point, the eggs have been in their solutions for 48 hours. Interestingly, the first egg that's in the air actually has some water in the bottom of the beaker. The egg hasn't broken, but there's still water there. I'm gonna pull that out and set it up. Next egg, egg B that's been in the water. Here's what that one looks like now. In egg C, you can't really tell this from the video, but that syrup that it's in, it's actually more watery than it used to be. It's not as syrupy as it was before. Here's how that egg looks like now. And now let's determine the mass of each one of the eggs. For the first one, I got a mass of 72.55 grams. I wanted to try out the mass one more time just to double check it and uh, it's a little rolly and that didn't work. So we'll just stick with that first measurement. For the second egg, that now has a mass of 94.35 grams. For the third egg, that now has a mass of 61.06 grams. So now let's do some math. Let's take a look at each one of the original three eggs in its solution and find out what its starting mass was. Now we can compare that to the mass after having been in the solution for 48 hours. Once we have that number, we can see that they either went up or down, but let's also look at the percent change. Was it a negative or was it a positive? Now what you need to do is ask yourself, why did some lose, why did some gain? And of those who lost, some lost a lot more than others. What's going on here? 